Thanks for joining us today for the Recruitment Reimagined webinar. My name is Kyle Wehrke and I am the Senior Recruiter here at the Oregon Department of Education. And I am joined today by... Cassie Graham. I'm another recruiter here at the Department of Education. And Jimmy Phillips. I'm a recruiter as well. Today's agenda, we're going to talk about the enhancements we have coming up for 2017. We're very excited about our new offerings. Uh, we're going to start off by talking to you today about our intake meetings and what those are going to look like going forward and what that means to the recruitment process. We're going to talk about our rapid recruitment document. This is a, a tool that we're going to um, start offering for hiring managers to talk about timelines um, and throughout the entire interview process. We're going to be talking about our new job posting language um, and the update that that um, is going to look like for all of our new postings being released. We're going to talk about our community outreach and what the, the great strides we're making there. We're going to talk about our social media outreach and how we're starting to build that network out and engaging passive candidates. We're going to talk about the hiring manager's manual, a new tool that's going to be on our intranet page. We're really excited about this as this is going to be an opportunity to, uh, for hiring managers to use this as a supplement to uh, the work that we're doing here on the recruitment team. We are going to talk about our unleashed new diversity statement that we put a lot of time and effort into. And we're going to talk about our internship process that's going to be upcoming uh, next summer. So our intake meetings. Uh, this is in response to some feedback we got from our hiring managers that we needed to improve some of the communication streams that we had. And these are going to be a little bit different than what we've had in the past. Um, the main focal points are really going to be to discuss the job announcement and making sure that the new look and feel that we have on our announcements is going to work uh, for the hiring managers, make sure that it says everything that it needs to say. We are going to have those um, condensed a little bit, and we'll talk about that in here in just a little while, but we're going to talk about those. We're going to start bringing up um, budget. So in the past, in our job announcements, we haven't put a high premium on budget, and we've posted the entire salary. Well, what we found is, is that as candidates come in to the department, they are sometimes interested in only the top end of the salary range. And what we hope this will do is dissuade candidates um, who are looking for positions that are paid at top step when maybe the agency can only afford towards the lower end of the salary range. So we're actually going to embed new language on our postings that will say, you know, our intent is to fill at the lower end of the salary range. We're going to talk about the overall timeline um, and if the hiring manager sees the rapid recruitment tool as a benefit, we'll use that during this time and really sketch out the individual days that we'll be doing our recruitment process. Um, we want to talk about uh, what the interview process actually looks like. Are we going to be doing multiple panels? Um, are we going to be doing dynamic interviewing? What do dynamic interviews look like in the grand scheme of this position? Then we're going to be talking about outreach and advertising. So a big component of what we're doing now is really being proactive in our recruitment strategy. And so we want to see if there are in particular areas or if there's groups or conferences that are upcoming that we can focus our recruitment strategies on and go find candidates for uh, our hiring managers and offices and making sure that we are bringing in the best and the brightest. So these are some of the, the uh, concepts that we want to start talking in these intake meetings. We want to be able to sketch out our process ahead of time so once the job actually closes, we're not spending a lot of time with our hiring managers talking about the panel development, uh, which candidates are going to be invited for the interview, which interview questions, which um, components we're going to be looking at for our interview process. We really want it to be a more streamlined function and we feel that this is going to be a critical component of that moving forward. So one of the new documents that we're going to be introducing to uh, you as hiring managers is our rapid recruitment document. This document is basically a detailed timeline of the entire recruitment process. Uh, Kyle, if you want to go ahead and open up, we'll take a look at what that document looks like. So what we have here is what our rapid response uh, recruitment document looks like. As you can see, there are different um, color-coded parts on the left-hand side here. That will tell you what HR is responsible for and the hiring managers are responsible for, so that there's no longer any question of, are we supposed to be doing this? Does HR do this? Now it's all laid out for you right there in this document. We also plug in the dates um, up at the top. We can plug in um, a start date, and then we can plug in how many dates the recruitment is open. And doing that, it will lay out for you important dates throughout the recruitment process. So you can see on this 
um, specific example here that we are opening in this announcement on January 17th. So we know that if it closes on January 27th, that the first round interviews should be scheduled around February 7th. What this does is it helps you as you're looking at your calendar for the next few months for you to block out those important dates and block out dates um, for your team members so that you can plan your interviews, you can plan time to do reference checks if it's something that you want to do, and then you can see that if we go down to the bottom of the list, we can even project when the candidate's going to start. So this gives you a good idea of what you need to be doing for the next few months. It's flexible. You can modify it if you've got vacation days and say you're not going to be here for when it looks like the first round interviews are. We can take a look at adjusting some of the dates. Maybe we post it a little longer. Maybe we delay the posting a little bit. If you're looking at you have to have this candidate here early, maybe we shorten the, um, the recruitment posting days. You know, there are so many things that we can look and manipulate through here to make the job a little bit easier for uh, the both of us. This will be an optional tool to use, um, but we are going to be pushing it out and we hope that you will take advantage of it. So another thing that we've taken a look at this year is kind of modifying our posting language in our job posting. We used to just kind of take a look at other agency job postings, kind of fill in our stuff so they all kind of looked the same. Um, you know, we talked about what the agency does, what the unit does, what the position does. They were very long. We put in all the duties that were in there. We had a bunch of stuff in the bottom that was just kind of filler information that went into every single job posting. We decided we wanted to be a little bit different. We want um, job seekers to look at our postings and be excited and say, wow, Department of Education looks like that's an exciting place to work for. So we modified it a little bit. We kind of tried to make our job postings a little bit more conversational. We tried to kind of shorten it down a little bit so that we're putting key points in there. Um, the first thing that we found that uh, candidates want to see is basically do they um, – do they meet the MQs for the position? So we kind of tried to put those in a location where we felt that they would stand out. Um, we're trying to create a lot more engagement with the job seekers, trying to make them see themselves working for our agency. So if you go here, you can take a look and kind of see a little bit about what our old language used to look like. Again, it was the standard, you know, the agency. We provide statewide leadership, you know. Um, the new language kind of goes into more of a diverse and inclusive environment. We want people to see here that a career at OBE means collaborating with passionate and talented professionals. So this is kind of the language that we're putting in there to um, engage a little bit more with our job seekers. So we've really been changing the way that <clears throat> we've been communicating with uh, um, our constituents and stakeholders. So. A couple of years we started going out to college and career fairs and we started looking at uh, colleges that had the same degree programs sort of in the hopes that a few years down the road students would consider coming to work for us here at the department. What we've been able to do since then and it was we've been actually been uh, starting to strategically identify programs within each university that um, has similar career tracks and experiences that we're looking here at the department. So on a recent trip, uh, I was down at Oregon Institute of Technology and we looked at the community health program and found out that a lot of the resources they have down there match are very similar in the classification of the child nutrition specialists that we have. And so we were able to get into the classroom, actually talk to the students um, and talk to the teachers and professors and the people who will be recommending those students to come to our agency for internship opportunities and for jobs. And so we're sort of targeting our college visits more than we have in the past. And we're actually starting to see um, some pretty good results from that. We've also started thinking about what does the future talent pipeline look like going forward? So it's important that we're targeting um, candidates now and next year and the year after that. But we need to be thinking even further down the road. We need to be thinking about students who want to come to work for state government and the Department of Education five and ten years down the road. 
So because of that, we've started looking at high schools and middle schools, looking at AVID programs and looking at um, very targeted uh, approaches to getting in the classroom and getting kids excited at a very early age about public sector employment and more specifically the work that we do here at the Department of Education. As a nice supplement to this, we were having conversations on our recruitment team about how do we engage community organizations differently as well. So we've been doing a really good job of connecting with colleges and high schools, but we weren't doing as well with connecting um, with candidates from like the Employment Department or Urban League or Partners in Diversity. And so in response to that, we have been engaging differently. We've been participating in workshops that uh, organizations are having about how to navigate the state hiring process or the NEOGov system. And so, again, we really feel like using this three-prong approach, it's going to allow us to not only continue to build our network um, upon what which we already have, it's going to continue to communicate ODE's brand and the fact that we want to be an employer of choice. And it's going to continue to develop that pipeline for future generations to consider us as a premier employer. So moving on to social media, social media was a pretty big thing that we've tackled in the past 18 months. Um, we were really excited to dive into it. We felt that, you know, first of all, it's a very free environment, um, no cost to us. And when you're working in public sector, a lot of times the funds are pretty limited, so you have to be creative. Um, and you can reach just a wide variety of audiences. So we figured, why aren't we taking advantage of these um, social media platforms? The first one we dove into was Twitter. So we've had a Twitter account now for about the past 18 months. We um, focused on it. We kind of built out a plan. Uh, right now we use it for posting our jobs. We also do a lot of interacting with the HR community. So we go in and we find, um, you know, like SHRM chats or other sort of HR chats, get involved in there so that we're getting um, some helpful tips from other um, colleagues of ours. We also looked into our LinkedIn and started um, ramping that up as well. So on LinkedIn, we have a company page, which we manage. We um, post some blog posts on there. We post some employee testimonials on there. And as recruiters, we also have our own individual pages where we can go and connect with job seekers. The real important thing about LinkedIn is that it allows you to converse with not only active job seekers, but a lot of passive job seekers. So if you have a hard to fill position, um, let's say a child nutrition specialist, and we're trying to look for um, child nutrition specialists maybe in the Portland, Salem area to reach out to and have conversations with, we can do searches in there pull up those individuals, and then contact them via email or phone to try to talk to them about working for the Department of Education. We've actually been very successful in that. Um, Kyle is our senior recruiter. He does a lot of work on LinkedIn through that. So if you have any issues or any upcoming recruitments that you think of that you might need that um, extra special attention to, work with Kyle and he can give you some tips. Another social media platform that we have looked at a little bit is Glassdoor. So Glassdoor um, allows job applicants and employees to leave reviews on companies um, on how their interviewing went or about working at your agency, um, kind of what your culture is. So we um, take a look at those interviews, um, reviews. Uh, take a look at the reviews that we're getting from our employees, and we kind of take those into consideration as we're making adjustments to what we're doing here in HR. YouTube is something we're just diving into. We plan to do some little short tips there, short recruiting tips. You know, here's five tips on how to do a cover letter, um, also trainings uh, that we put on through our HR department. Another thing we're starting to do now is to do monthly branding campaigns. We're really excited to get this going. We've kind of been doing it since about September. Um, so we've got about four months or so that we're into it. What we do is we, um, we create a blog and then post the blog on our LinkedIn page, cross post it on Twitter. We're doing um, visual media and posting it on YouTube so that we're putting them across all platforms. What we're trying to do is 
to have job seekers not only come to us to see jobs that we may have open, but we want them to see us as a resource that they can use as they're trying to further their career. So the hiring manager's manual was again in response to some uh, feedback we'd gotten back from our hiring managers in the fact that if we are out in the field recruiting, if we are not uh, directly at our desk and they have a need to get a hold of us, um, there was no way for uh, us to, to do that. And so this was a resource for them uh, to take a look at, uh, whether it's answering simple questions or more in-depth questions. Um, and getting a, a flavor for what the recruitment process is really um, kind of soup to nuts. It goes into and talks about the um, how to develop a good position description and how that really can build towards um, a good job announcement and how the recruiters, when we draft our announcement, take a lot of information from that uh, position description. And then as it goes into the actual posting process, um, it talks about how to create an interview process, whether that's dynamic or panel and then really walks all the way through doing the reference check, how to offer the position, um, and then focuses on onboarding. So it really is a comprehensive manual that um, gives managers ideas and uh, resources to uh, follow up when necessary. Now, we want this to be a supplement, and I say that is that we love connecting with our hiring managers and being a resource for them. Um, so we really do see these two things going hand in hand. Diversity. One of the reasons I came to work at the Department of Education was the heavy emphasis on retaining and gaining employees of diversity. And after further research, we decided what can we do to increase those diversity numbers. Um, we, we started by focusing on our job postings, uh, the job announcements that we post every week for different positions. And the original statement, while, while we could say it was compliant, we just didn't feel it was rather inviting or inviting enough to our diverse candidates. Uh, I took an approach where if I wasn't intentionally trying to recruit uh, candidates of diversity, I thought I might be unintentionally not recruiting them or getting their input. And so the original statement pretty much called for the Department of Education focuses on uh, and a, the, <laughs> the, department, the Oregon Department of uh, education focuses on retaining um, a diverse workforce. We've added a little more meat to that. The Oregon Department of Education is committed to searching for and sustaining a culturally, racial, racially, ethnically, and linguistically diverse working environment. We are dedicated to hiring and retaining a diverse staff that blends expertise and interest in supporting every student in Oregon. The Oregon Department of Education understands that an authentic focus on equity diversity and inclusion in the workplace will in turn create an engaging and talented workforce devoted to creating a better education system for Oregon. And I'd also like to give a special thank you to Markeisha Smith and her equity unit for helping human resources craft that message. And again, we're not just stopping with the diversity statement. We are going to add inviting language of diversity and wanting to gain diversity throughout the posting. Another way that we're trying to um, <clears throat> improve the Oregon Department of Education is through our internship program. Uh, many will ask, why an internship? Many of you and other departments have already started this process. Well, we wanted to keep promoting that fact. Uh, we believe strongly that valuable mentorship is a great opportunity to help students locally in universities and high schools throughout the area. Uh, we feel that not only are we getting great candidates, but we're creating a future pipeline of talent. Again, sourced locally, deep in the heart of the Willamette Valley. And then also, it's a great way to uh, introduce succession planning to your different departments. Uh, we're fully aware that there's going to be a large load of retirees coming in the next few years, and we'll want to be prepared by hiring high-quality candidates. So what are the benefits? Well. Human Resources believes there's a win-win for both the student or the intern and the company. They're great learning opportunities for students. They get to join a, a sophisticated workforce. Um, they provide different approaches to work that many of us have grown accustomed to. And 
it's a great opportunity for departments to unload some of those projects that have been sitting on the shelves that we haven't had time to work on. Many of us are really overworked and have a lot on our plate, and it's nice to have a nice, bright student able to take those projects and add their own personal flair to that project. Now, Human Resources, we're very proud to say we have a great intern named Molly Anderson. Many of you already have met Molly. She's approached you about doing perhaps class door interviews or just asking for or new recruits on how their experience with the Department of Education has been going. Uh, Molly was hired simply to improve our social network aspect uh, within the program. It was a program that was very young, we didn't have a lot of time to put into, and we hired Molly to add her own special flair and attendance to that project. So what's the process for getting an internship? Well, we've decided to keep it simple. We didn't want to add too many uh, obstacles to the task. Uh, you'll start with a request to fill. Uh, you can find that on your local intranet, or just go to Human Resources and ask for help. Um, again, we'll, the Human Resources will do all the posting language for the process. Uh, we'll lead the interview process, but we'll hope that you have a highly qualified and engaging and diverse team to do the interviews. And then the final question is, do we want to do a paid or unpaid internship? Now, we would stress uh, paid, but we can work with students and their schools on gaining school credit. And we also want to add to the fact that even though we say paid, we don't feel it's a high investment. Um, for as little as $2,500 for, for the summer period, you can have an internship utilizing and really utilizing and really taking care of some of those hard to do projects that you simply just don't have time to do. <clears throat> so at the department, we these are the three recruiters that we've been chatting with you today. We appreciate you spending some time with us. Um, our offices are listed below as well as our contact information. So if you have any questions about any of the topics we've covered today or you just like to stop by, we always love to connect with our hiring managers and staff. And at this time, uh, we appreciate your time and energy and hope to see you back next time. Thanks.